Hola, it is Thursday, April 6th. You know what that means? It's Masters Week. It's the Thursday of Masters Week. So I am watching the Masters, I'm having a beer, and I am doing an Inkscape video for you guys. Um, I do not know who wins, so by the time you watch this, you will. So do not spoil the surprise. Do not put any comments about who won, okay? I don't need to know until Sunday. Wait, it doesn't work like that, does it? Okay, whatever. Uh, so let's get started on Inkscape. So. This portion of the video, what we're going to be doing is, you, I told you in the, in the explanation of Inkscape that we're going to be drawing shapes to draw our tee boxes, our fairways, our greens, and all that stuff. Well, we need to import in a picture of our golf course from the sky, our satellite image, so that we know where to draw this stuff. So that's what this video is, is going to be, is importing our satellite imagery. We're also going to import our hill shade. If you do not know what a hill shade is, you missed some videos. There were some supplemental videos added to the LiDAR to terrain free process about how to get a hill shade. Um, you should have done those on your own, or perhaps you had someone make those for you. Um, hill shade isn't absolutely necessary, but I tell you what, strongly recommended that you have a hill shade. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to go watch those videos. Look in the table contents for them. So what do we need to do here? Let me uh, show you, first of all, Inkscape. And so I just open up Inkscape, a uh, blank document here. So you see new document and the defaults to this like looks like a piece of paper, right? Um, we need to import or open up our satellite imagery. Your satellite imagery is going to be in one of two places, depending on how you got it. Okay. If you did it yourself, you can follow my directions here. If you had someone else do your LIDAR to terrain free process, you need to look in a different spot. So if someone did that for you, I'm guessing this is where it's going to be, but you need, might need to find out from them for sure. They're, they would have given you like a Unity file with a, with a bunch of files in it, okay? Um, you could either have abstracted that to a folder. So in other case, you need to go into that folder and look for these image files that are your satellite overlays, or they might have given you a Unity package. In that case, they would be here. So this is if someone did it for you. You're gonna go to open. And if you listen to me, and you created an OPCD projects folder, which I hope you did, following my advice, you know, you should have the name of your course here, in my case, Hershey Country Club, and then you'll have your Unity project, and then you'll have an assets folder, and then down underneath here, you'll have your train backup folder. That's where you should have, they might have put, whoever did your LiDAR terrain might have put it in that directory for you if you imported those into Unity. Or they might have just given you a zip file, and they might be within there. Sorry, I can't give you great advice on where that's going to be. You might have to ask the person who did that for you. Okay. I have to close my window because it's starting to rain. Sorry. Uh, now, let me cancel out of this. Now, if you did your own LiDAR and your own overlays, this is where, you, if you follow my videos, where they should be. So I'm going to come here to open. Uh, let me just show you again. If you followed my advice, you should have your OPCD projects folder, the name of your course, Hershey OPCD, I'm sorry, your Hershey Country Club height map folder for you, the name of your course height map, and then your overlays, and then they will all be within here. You might have some outer imagery as well. I do not for this course, I don't tend to use an outer. Um, you do not need your outers for Inkscape, not at all, okay? You will only need your outers later on in Unity, if you even have outers, okay? We're gonna be doing all inners. So here, I've got three different files. I'm looking for these JPEG files here. So I've got my Hershey Country Club Bing, I got my Hershey Country Club Google, and I have my Hillshade, okay? Um, we already covered that a little bit. So I'm gonna start with the Bing. I'm gonna click on that guy, and I'm gonna open it up. Depending on the size of it, it might take a little bit, but first you're gonna get this pop-up, and you're just gonna click OK. That's gonna take a second and it's going to render and open up. Now, over here, we can see that we now have our, in our layers and objects menu or panel over here, we now have a new folder called image. We're gonna take that, double click on it, and I'm gonna change that to sat overlays. And underneath there, which is the image that we just brought in, I'm gonna double click on that and I'm gonna call this one Bing overlay. You can really call these anywhere, anything you want, not important. But first thing of Inkscape is what can we do? Well, we can hide that folder and hide that image, 
right? And we can just also hide that image by clicking the eyeball. So let's make some adjustments here. And everything I'm about to do, please be very precise because if you mess this up now, you're gonna be in for a world of hurt later on. A lot of your work will be for nothing, okay? Because we have to have these images lined up very precisely with the exact numbers that we used in our LIDAR to terrain process. So before we move on, you need to know your terrain size. Your terrain size, if you did the LIDAR to terrain process, you put it inside of that spreadsheet. You might have the feet spreadsheet, you might have the meter spreadsheet, but it's this inner right here, this number. In my case, it's 2591. Do not use 2591, that's not your course. This is my course, leave my course alone. You need to find your inner. If you're not sure, do not guess, find out what it is. OK, if someone did your LIDAR for you, they should have told you what it is or they should have put it in the files to tell you what it is. Do not guess. If you guess, you will fuck everything up. OK, so now that I got that number 2591, I'm going to come up here to file. Document properties and you can see here. First thing I'm going to do in my format is I'm going to change this from pixels to millimeters because millimeters, one millimeter in this case represents one meter. So if that's the case, what do you think is gonna go in my width and my height here? Your terrain size. For me, that's 2591. And here, also 2591, okay? Those should be the same numbers. If they're not the same, you fucked up, okay? So 2591, 2591, we're good. Now, how do we check that? Well, we can see, if we hide our overlays, that our background, our canvas, has now changed, okay? It's a different size. It's no longer like a piece of paper anymore. It is a different size. So let's turn these guys back on. Well, now we see that our sat overlay that I put here doesn't quite match, okay? You can see that I got this white area here. We need to get those to match, okay? So how do we do that? Well, up here, we see this width and height. Well, this is the width and height of this image. It says 8192 by 8192, but it's in pixels. Again, let's change this to millimeters and let's change this to my terrain size. Again, this is my terrain size, not your terrain size. You use your own terrain size. And now when I do that, look what magically happens. My Bing overlay matches my canvas exactly. Make sure that is happening with yours. These should match exactly. They should be your terrain size. If not, you're in for a world of hurt later on, okay? Ooh, I got something going on here. What's going on? Oh, see, <laughs> lesson learned. Make sure these match your terrain size. I didn't, okay? I get the wrong number in here. So what was that number again? 2591, I put 2195. 2591, enter. Ha ha. See, now it matches. Boom. That's being smart. See, detail oriented. I'm not. So now that we've got our Bing overlay situated, let's bring in our Google overlay. Now, instead of doing file open, we're going to do file import. So we're adding a new image. And now we're going to get a slightly different screen, but very similar. Go to that same place, which is on my D drive, my OPCD projects, where I was before, Hershey Country Club, height map, overlays, and looking for my Google copy JPEG, right there. We're going to get that pop up again, hit OK. And it'll take a second to think. And now here comes my Google, which is not right. Oh, no, it is right. <laughs> so this is good because you should see right away that this is not lined up. Do not assume, okay, that your image is lined up. Even if you think it looks close, come up here to the top, okay? And the first thing you need to do is make sure that these numbers right here are zero. Zero, X and Y need to be zero, okay? Then change this to what? your terrain size, not 2591. That's my terrain size, 2591. What do we have here? Now we have another image that if I 
move up here, zoom in a tad, basically lays right over top of the previous one. Now, they should line up. If they do not, you need to go back and look at the Hillshade videos on how to line these up, okay? That means you missed some videos. They need to be lined up pretty much down to the, the meter, okay? They need to be very, very close. Otherwise, uh, you're not exactly sure where to put your shapes. So make sure that they lined up. Um, so now that I got that, I'm gonna double click on this guy. I'm gonna call this one my Google overlay. All right, okay. Let me back out here just a tad, zoom out. And let me come back up here again. File, import. And now I'm going to do my hill shade. So if you don't have a hill shade, you're going to see what it is now. Open that up. Hit OK. See how big this file is. Now, what is a hill shade? Well, it's basically like a shaded topology map. So you can see things that you normally wouldn't see. It's very easy to see where there's buildings and water and things. It's just another option for lining things up. Now, does this look lined up to you? No, definitely not. What do we need to do? We need to change this to zero. We need to change this to zero. And what's this? Yep, our terrain size. Well, your terrain size, not mine, not 2591 whatever yours is, enter. And now you can see that I've got these three things. So let me rename this. I'm gonna rename this guy Hill Shade. Um, and you can see that I can turn this off. Okay, so now I'm looking at my Google overlay because it is on top of my Bing. So things higher in the higher, the higher in the hierarchy there over here, there's the top, it's be on top. So I'm looking at my Google now because my hill shade is hidden. I can also hide my Google and I'll see my Bing. I'll give you guys a little hint here. Things in Inkscape perform a lot better if you only have one of these things turned on at a time. So if I come back up here and I turn on all three of these, you can see that things get a little slow, right? Well, if I wanna look at my hill shade and use it later on, what I tend to do is I'll turn off my Google, I'll turn off my Bing, and now it's much more responsive to me moving things around, okay? Just a little hint there. So two last things before we end this video. One is learn to use the lock button. The last thing you wanna do is accidentally grab something here and move it around. Okay, so for example, I don't want to accidentally grab my hill shade. I just moved it. Okay, you can see that my X and Y up here is now not zero. So I put this back because I accidentally moved it. So it's all lined up again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to my sat overlay folder on the top and I'm going to lock this. Now I can't move that. Okay, I can't grab it. I can't do much of anything with it. Okay, it's locked into place. So that's a best practice. Last thing we need to do here, guys, is save. <laughs> We're going to do file, save as. And where are we going to save this to? So let's go into, we're going to go into our Hershey OPCD folder. So not the height map folder, our Hershey OPCD folder. And we're going to go into our terrain and we're going to save it here now i already have a couple in here so i'm not going to save over this but I'll call it something like hershey country club or the name of your course blah 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 svg all right um, don't worry about these other ones but you want to save it in this terrain folder inside of your hershey opcd directory all right um, that is it um, carry on